Hi, it's Tash from Foxes and Brown Bears Tarot. And today I thought I would do a bit of a tag in honor of the Academy Awards. And so I'm calling it the Tarot Awards of 2021. Now, I did initially think that I might just look at decks that were published in 2021. However, I didn't actually purchase a lot that were published last year. And so I have just decided to do the awards based on the decks that I purchased in 2021. So I've got a number of categories. It's pretty cool. So feel free to join along as well. Let me know what your thoughts are and let us begin. So the first category is best deck for beginners. And this one was published in 2021 and it's the Good Karma Tarot by Kerry Ward. And this is just such an easy accessible deck. So this was published by O. And it just really, really easy to use straight out of the box. It's got a great little guidebook that just gives you so much great information on reading. Really easy to read. Um, very, very straightforward. It's got some great little tips and things and even the minors have quite a lot of information too. Now, the reason why I find this one is particularly good for beginners is the imagery is very, very accessible and everyday world. The only thing I don't like about it is the fact that it's split like that. But just looking at a few cards, we won't look at all the, a lot of cards for each of these categories because there are a number of categories. And I don't want the video to go too long. So these are the backs, really, really cool. It is a bit glossy, but I actually quite like it. It shuffles really nicely. It's not sticky at all. And But as you can see, it's just so relatable. They are everyday people and just lovely, beautiful death card. I mean, how amazing is that? And yeah, just people you'd see in your everyday life. Um, the only thing that might put some people off is there aren't a lot of men in this. It's really only the kings and some of the knights um, that are men. Um, other than that, uh, it is a very uh, female presenting deck. But, I mean, it's just so gorgeous because you don't actually need to know very much about tarot to be able to read stories within that. The imagery is very self-explanatory. And I mean, look at that with the sword about it being, being able to just cut those binds. And just, yeah, I just, I think it's a very easy deck. Um, it'll be great for younger people, great for anyone new to tarot. And so that's the Good Karma Tarot by Kerry Ward, winning best deck for beginners. All right, so the next category is best artwork and once again this was published in 2021 and this was a no-brainer for me it has to go to tarot of the abyss by anna turian and this ah oh, this is such a beautiful beautiful deck so this is published by us game systems and lovely little box cute little book very helpful little book as well um, just to give you a sense, um, it really describes some of the artwork too, which I always like, but ultimately this is just this beautiful, um, jewel toned deck, beautiful cardstock, but I mean, look at the imagery, look at this imagery. It's, it's just some of the most beautiful, evocative artwork that I have in pretty much all my decks, just just so gorgeous and I love that it's not in color because I think that really draws out the mood of it really gets you allows you to look at the imagery close up see all the details and it is just 
so beautiful so so beautiful so this was a no-brainer this had to win best artwork for 2021 so yes so that's the tarot of the abyss by anna turian so category number three is best theme now i had to go over a deck that was actually published a long time ago but i finally purchased it last year and anyone who knows me is a no-brainer. This is the Science Tarot. To me, this is amazing. This is the best thought-out theme deck ever. I agree with the choice in every single card. And it is just, wow. If you like science, there's everything in it. And it's just really well thought out too. So um, it splits it up into the different categories of science, you know, like astrophysics and um sort of mathematics and biology and chemistry and and it, it and geology and and it just the the theme is so well thought out and beautifully color coded and the stories behind each card is just perfect it really helps you to understand what that card is about and and even more than that, the book goes into the whole hero's journey for each of the suits and for the major arcana. And so it does this in a really cool way. And I love how the court cards are actual scientists um, from history, um, past and present. And it is just incredible. It is my all-time favorite deck I think now like it's one of my all-time favorites it's it's a it's a very close contender uh, with the everyday enchantments and and that's because I just love this theme so much so much and so that is the science tarot if you're interested in exploring this in more depth um, I do have a walkthrough a very thorough walkthrough of this deck and I shall try and remember to link it in the cards so that is best theme is the science tarot and this one is accessible via science tarot.com so yeah all right category number four is best card stock and this one has to go to an oracle deck this is the raw oracle by mj cullinane and this is just beautiful. It's got 54 cards, trailblazing and inspirational women to share their wisdom and insights. And yeah, this was published in 2021. So this is, um, yeah, so I have actually chosen some from 2021, which is kind of cool. But yeah, and this is absolutely gorgeous. It does have a cute little um, guidebook that does just briefly describe the people in it um and obviously mj cullinane's artwork is beautiful uh, the backs are gorgeous and yeah it's just very beautiful this card stock oh my gosh it's kind of that satiny i don't know satiny matte so you can see it's got a bit of sort of that satin look to it it's quite thin but it's just so flexible and feels so beautiful in your hands. It is just a pleasure to work with. It just, I don't know, it just kind of feels malleable and um, but smooth and yet shuffles really well like it glides. And ah, oh, this is just gorgeous, gorgeous cardstock. I absolutely adore it now i have been meaning to do a walkthrough of this deck and i probably will um, do one soon because i think it'd be kind of interesting to explore um, all the women in this deck and have a look at the artwork um, in a bit more detail so look out for that one all right so that was best card stock goes to raw oracle by mj cullinane then next one is best guidebook and this one has to go to the Dark Goddess Tarot. 
So I'll show you the deck very quickly because obviously that's not the focus of this particular category. But yeah, so it is glossy. It is, this is the mass market one with the um, gilding and, and yes, with the banners and all that. I actually like the banners. I like this cardstock. I like that it's really easy to shuffle because it glides. And I, I love the artwork. I find it really just beautiful to the point. Um, I love the color schemes in it. So I actually really like this version. I'm very happy with it. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous deck. And I don't use it as a tarot. I use it more so as an oracle. Um, but it does work as a tarot. It's just that I like working with the particular energy and message of a single goddess so it's not a deck I would use in a spread for example um, but to, let's get to the guidebook which is the point of this so this guidebook okay and I didn't mention um didn't mention that this is by Ellen Lorenzi Prince and it is just oh my gosh so basically it does give you information on the working of the goddesses it does give you um, some great spreads and things it does give you a little um, summary of the changes in um, in naming or whatever, and but mostly it lists the particular goddesses. Um, and but what I love about it is that it's got this great color picture of the card. Then it has this great little key phrase. So here for the Empress. Compassion and devotion make the impossible possible. And when I draw a card for the day or the week or whatever, whatever I feel drawn to do with this one, I actually just make a note of that particular little phrase because that to me is something I carry with me. And it almost becomes a bit like an affirmation, a reminder of something I need to remember and something I need to act on. And that, that in itself is powerful. But then... It gives you all this information on the goddess and might give you some information on some of the artwork um, decisions. It gives you some of the key, um, the story of the goddess that links, that, that makes that goddess link to that particular card choice. And so that was the kind of interesting aspect of it. Um, it does, because it is the dark goddess or goddess, uh, tarot it's not because the goddesses are dark in any way um some of them are some of them aren't um i mean but it's it's more that it looks at some of the darker aspects of life more the darker aspects of their mythology of their stories the challenges they faced and this what this is what makes this guidebook so useful when you pull this a card from this deck as as a daily read or as a weekly read because it will give you a story of some of the more difficult things that potentially go on for this goddess um, some of the key traits she has some of the key things she works with in terms of helping people with challenges and then it gives you an indication of what the card might mean for you in this situation and this these are the most well thought out descriptions I have ever seen really in a guidebook and they are just so beautiful and it's things that you can really take with you um, during the day and it's just and it's really clear too you know so for the empress it's access a situation of an open heart you know um and you know celebrate creation or find a quilt where you can feel the love in every stitch so there's some practical things there's more general things like with the morrigan uh, who's the emperor situation requires someone to take charge of it you know know your truest needs um or offer the goddess ale or blood black and and flame or something so it's just that it just, it just, it's, it's a gorgeous guidebook and I, I cannot say enough about it. And what's particularly nice about it is even the miners have exactly the same amount of information. And so it is a beautiful, beautiful book um, to work from. 
And you don't even really need to explore the goddesses any further than this if you don't want to, though you can. And it's also cool that it does actually look at goddesses from um, lots of cultures, past and present. So that's kind of cool. So yes, so I shall keep waxing lyrical about that one. So I shall move on to the next category, which is Best Oracle. Now, this was not published in 2021, but it's the Sacred Destiny Oracle by Denise Lin. I only bought it last year, and it has gone to the top as probably my favorite oracle of all time. And so it has to win Best Oracle of 2021. This is a Hay House production, and the booklet is amazing. So it describes the image and it's it just gives you this lovely little explanation of what the card might mean for you now this looks like it's really short but it is so powerful and it's always so so spot on and wow i mean look the backs are beautiful it is a nice mat although it's the mat that sticks a little so i'm not a great fan of this card stock um but it does bring out the images really nicely. Now, it does have borders. I actually really like the borders on this because it gives you a sense of framing for these beautiful landscapes. So, so you can walk into them, like step into them, rather than just be in them already. And so this is kind of, this would be a really good one for meditation too, I think. But I love it because it's beautiful landscapes and I do love my landscapes. And yeah, the, the images are just gorgeous, but it's these keywords as well, just absolutely beautiful. And in conjunction with the guidebook, this has always been on point and it pretty much goes with any tarot deck I could think to combine it with. And it just works. It can work as daily draws, weekly draws, as clarifiers as part of a spread it's just an all-rounder gorgeous oracle deck and i would argue that if you only want one oracle deck in your collection and you're not sure which one it will be did i definitely consider this one um i really like it and i think it's you can use it for multiple purposes so it's not it's not very specific even thematically it covers a lot of aspects and it also covers some darker aspects of life too. Um, so it's not all just, you know, happy stuff and um, joy and amazing, like floating on air, like healing chaos. Um, yeah, so anyway, so that is the best oracle that I purchased in 2021. And that is the Sacred Destiny Oracle by Denise Lin. Then, moving on to Best All-Rounder Tarot. Um, and this one, I'll have to give to the Tarot de Marseille Wait. So this is by uh, Emmanuel Iger and Alice Laverty. And this is by Edition Trajectoire. And this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous deck. And it does come with this very, very brief book. And it's got, um, in French, it is in French. So, yeah, if you're not into French very much. But then again, it's really basic. And it's not exactly a difficult deck to read, as you will see if, once we look at it. It does come with this cute little bag. And the backs are gorgeous. I love the backs. I like that it actually like works, it slides really nicely and yeah, it's got a nice thickness to it too. Uh, maybe a bit cardboardy, but I just, I actually really like how it feels in my hand. And what's great about this one is, is it's the miners are in the RWS style and then the majors are in Marseille style. And I love this because I love the Marseille style mages, but I don't like reading of pip decks. And so I've never 
purchased a Marseille deck because it's not something that appeals to me too much. And I know I wouldn't use it, at least at this stage. I mean, who knows? In the future, I might. But at the moment, I won't. And so when I saw this, I thought this was like perfect because it does the miners with the RWS symbology, but in that Marseille style. And it's just gorgeous. And I'm not someone who loves reading with the standard RWS it's not really my cup of tea in terms of artwork and, I don't know, and coloration. But the coloration of this is beautiful. And, and it's just really different. And because it's that very, very standard imagery, like it is an all-rounder. Like you can pretty much read it for, use it for any kind of reading. And it's just, yeah, it just works. And, and I also think that, the fact that it's got the two systems combined makes it even more of an all-rounder in some ways because if you feel like, oh, I don't know which one to pull, I don't know which deck to use or type of deck to use, this is one that you can just go to. You know you're going to get um, very accurate, um, beautiful readings and the artwork's just gorgeous. And as I said, I really like the colours in this because I'm not a fan of the colours of the traditional RWS. So yeah, so that's my all-rounder deck, and I think it's it's very, very beautiful. So moving on now to the best Lenormand. Now I've only purchased a couple Lenormands, um, but definitely the one I have to go with that I purchased last year is the Tannis Lenormand by Celia Malsville. And this comes in a gorgeous little tin. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful little deck. It's just so gorgeous. So, yeah, so that's my edition. It's got this cute little guidebook, which is just really helpful. It covers, it, it kind of looks at it in terms of um, different aspects. So, keywords and looks at spiritual, body and well being, and time indication. And then it also has um, this cute, almost like kind of poem description of the card so it's beautiful and it's also nice because it does if you turn it around it does it in French so good if you want to learn French too if you're studying French but it's 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 so cute so cute and then it has this little um cheat sheet as well um so cute little cheat sheet and yeah it's super pretty and then if we have a look at it it is teensy, super teensy. Like this is like crazy teensy. Like if I was to compare it to my um, Tarot de Marseille weight, which is standard tarot size, you can see how teensy it is. I love it. I love it. I love it. It is glossy, but it slides. It's not a sticky gloss. And it's just so cute. Celia Malzell's artwork is divine the colors and it does also give you the playing card um <coughs> correspondence if that's um something you want but it's just really simple drawing um you know immediately what the card is referring to um so it doesn't even matter that it doesn't have it on there it does have numbers so you can look it up but it's pretty clear that's fish right you know so it's super clear um, and the colorations, as I said, is gorgeous. Her artwork is beautiful and it's just so nice to work with. Like, look at that dog. Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful. But yeah, just very, very simple. And what I like about this one too is I've struggled with Lenormans because I have a snake phobia and I don't like looking at snake cards and this snake is okay so let me find the snake and then i'll oh can i just show you those birds oh my god so that's a snake so that's all right i can handle that snake right oh look at the fox and so yeah really really beautiful and the other thing is they also have choices with the male female cards so that's one of the male cards um, I think I just passed one of the others. So there you've got two female cards that you can choose from. And there's the other male card. So you can kind of mix and match 
and make decisions based on what which which cards best represent you. So I like that. So that's the Tannis Lenormand. Um, very, very cute little deck. And that is my best Lenormand of 2021. Or at least that I purchased in 2021. Although it is my all-time favourite Lenormand. All right. And then best mass market tarot is the Tarot of Mystical Moments by Katrin Weltz-Stein. And this was published in 2021. And this is absolutely gorgeous. So US Games, very, very accessible in that sense, um, even though I know people were struggling to get hold of it because it was so popular. But this is just beautiful. It is so so beautiful it comes with extra cards so you can actually choose um you got key uh, male and female choices for each of the kings and and two emperors as well and so i've kind of just gone through and chosen my, chosen my favorite ones but i'm tempted to kind of put them all in because it might give you different interpretations of those cards it is glossy but it's slidey glossy not sticky glossy um, it is gilded in silver, um, but the artwork, oh my gosh, and this is just so beautiful. It's whimsical and evocative, and it, it's like you can step into this amazing story, and it's just so well done, and it's just so gorgeous. I absolutely adore this deck, and I would have to say it is the best mass market deck that I purchased in 2021 um, as an all-rounder kind of, well, not as an all-rounder, but as a, as a deck that I just love for multiple reasons. Like it, it is just really, really beautiful. Um, and I could have interchanged this one with the Tower of the Abyss as well, um, because this one does have gorgeous artwork too and obviously the tarot of the abyss is one of my favorite decks from last year too but i think that tarot of the abyss deserved the the best artwork um category so i gave the best mass market deck to the tarot of mystical moments so moving on to we've got two more categories so best indie deck goes to the Healing Waves Tarot by Nawan Junhasiri. And this one is out of print. So I apologize for that immensely. But I had to I had to include it because I just love it so much. I love the feel of the box. It's rose petal. I love the production quality is just so beautiful. And and it's like everything, like all the touches in the box are just gorgeous. And these are the backs, which look like kind of water, like the waves. And these, and it's, oh, it's edged in this matte light blue. Oh, just so pretty. I don't have any deck in this color. It's just so gorgeous. And it is this beautiful rose petal finish. Um... But it doesn't stick as much as some others. Um, but I don't even care because it is just so beautiful. And I've I've got it in order because I actually want to go through it in a bit more detail. So um, it's one that I've put aside for study. But look at that color palette. Oh, my gosh. And it's just gorgeous. It's these beautiful watercolors that she painted with seawater. And it's ocean themes, but also very, it's kind of almost like a whimsical, kind of relaxing ocean theme. It's oh, just so beautiful. The way all these sea creatures are depicted, um, great choices of animals for each card. I mean, look at that strength card, incredible. Um, yeah, it's just so beautiful. And the miners are absolutely gorgeous too so here you've got pearls for earth 
um, but all fully illustrated, just gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. And so, yes, yeah, so this is a crab, like a lot of crabs in that one. And, and then you've got water, which is beautiful. So you've got all these little jellyfish and it's just so pretty. And then you've got fire, which has these salamanders which is gorgeous and then you got air kind of has these gulls these little seagulls look at that one oh my gosh so yeah i i love this Well, this one has a penguin so yeah i like it a lot it is a beautiful beautiful deck and so that to me has to win a best indie deck of 2021 and then my final category is kind of a whimsical category. And if you do choose to uh, do a VR or, or, or try your own variation of this tag, uh, you can obviously change this category. Um, because I did initially think that maybe I'd look at different categories, types of decks. And, and I thought, nah, I've, I've done that before. So, But what I do want to do is best animal deck. And the reason for that is because animal decks are my favorite decks of all time. And so I thought that deserved a category. And so I have gone with the Tarot Renard by Celia Melsville. And this is just so beautiful. Like this box is just gorgeous. Um, yeah, it's nice little, um, beautiful little deck. And it's got... Um, it's got a cute little guidebook, um, English on one side, and then French if you reverse it, so uh, similar to her Tannis Lenormand. And then she's also got these little um, cheat sheet cards, uh, which looks at um, the different meanings of the cards just in a quick little snapshot. And so, but this is beautiful look at those backs it is a matte cardstock but it's got this um gold inlay cute foxes and this is just gorgeous i mean i have to pick this anyway because foxes i love foxes as you can see from my ring and and my fox and my channel name but th these are just beautiful watercolor images with foxes doing the cutest things i mean these are the cutest cutest foxes and they are just so beautiful i mean look at that your heart breaks for that fox and it is just the most beautiful deck and i love her artwork and and even though like some of the images are a little bit anthropomorphized in the sense of in terms of their activities um, they're not wearing clothing, so I like that because I don't like animals in human clothing. It's something that doesn't appeal to me at all. Um, but yeah, it's just so cute. So this has to be my favorite, the best animal deck of 2021 because that's when I received it. And it is gorgeous. And I love the snowy images. Oh, look, look at it. Oh, so beautiful. So anyway, so they that is my Tarot Awards of 2021. And please feel free to follow along. Let me know if you do. If you want to do a VR and you're doing a VR, let me know. Because I want to watch it. And I want to see what your awards are. And feel free to change the categories. That's cool because there's so many possible categories, let's face it. And I just had to cut it down because otherwise we would be here for about 45 hours. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and keep, you know, keep an eye out. I will be making more videos. I have been slack. I have not been 100% and I just haven't felt motivated. And there's nothing worse than making a video when you're not motivated because it will sound a little bit half-assed and not particularly fun to watch. And so I just kind of thought it was probably best to wait till I had a little bit more motivation. So thank you for those who have stayed subscribed, who've hung in there, who believed I'd be back. I appreciate it. 
and I will try and not to do that again. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.